Hello my friends and welcome to my video talking about the various different depictions of mythical creatures on ancient Greek and Roman coins. There's a lot of different types to go through so let's get started. First we're going to start with the Capricorn. See this is a portrait of Augustus. Augustus's sign, the zodiac, was the Capricorn. That's his portrait and before him is a little symbol of the Capricorn. The story goes was that a great soothsayer actually predicted um, you know, his uh, rise to power and um, the Capricorn was his um, you know, zodiac symbol and his power symbol which he also minted on his coins. Therefore the Capricorn on this coin. It is a provincial coin with uh, Augustus and Romitaki, so very interesting type. So, but what we're looking for is the Capricorn, the mythical creature and the zodiac sign. Next, we have the centaur, half man, half horse. Very interesting type depicted here holding a globe and a trophy. The trophy is a symbol of a military victory. And uh, this is an ancient Roman coin of Emperor Galenus. So, this is a depiction of the centaur. Very interesting. Next, what we have here is an ancient silver coin of Corinth, depicting the Pegasus and Athena. Very interesting type. The Pegasus was the flying horse, and it was uh, flown by Bellerophon. So, we have a beautiful ancient Greek coin with, of Corinth. Next, this is an ancient uh, coin of Constance, who was the son of Constantine the Great. This coin actually features the phoenix on a pyre. A few, basically, a pyre was something um, that would be burned up after somebody passed on. But the idea of the phoenix being reborn from the ashes. And the interesting thing is that by this time, uh, Christian mythology or Christian religion has been adopted very greatly. And the whole idea was actually Jesus Christ was described as the phoenix having died and risen again. So, very interesting ancient iconography on this beautiful coin of Constance. This is a coin with, in fantastic condition also. Check out the patina on this coin. A patina develops over the, over the many years. This used to look more, have more of a, like a copper uh, look and o only over time does this develop. So we have the phoenix on this coin. Next we have another coin of Corinth. But what we're trying to look at is actually the figure of the Chimera. The Chimera was a mythical creature which was part lion, part serpent, and part goat. So you, you see it's like a lion with a head growing out of its uh, back and also the tail is also a serpent. So it's a um, very interesting mythological creature. Again it has um, another mythological symbol, the Pegasus. So. But the Chimera is a very interesting. Next. This is actually a very interesting coin from the ancient city of Gurgis and Troas. The reason why it's also especially interesting is that, first of all, it has a sphinx on it. And on the front, it has the prophetess uh, called the Sibyl Herophile. So, she was also known as the Oracle of the Ancient Times. But what we're looking at, what we're focusing on here is the Sphinx. The Sphinx, we know, we have in Egypt. And uh, the Sphinx was depicted on coins of Gurgis and also the coins of the ancient Greek city of Chios. C-H-I-O-S. Very interesting. Next... We have what could be described as a seahorse, half horse, half fish, the hippocamp. This is an ancient coin of the Greek city of Syracuse in Sicily. And has beautiful depiction of the, you know, the winged horse with the fish tail. And on the front we have Athena. 
Notice the theme of Athena is actually quite popular in ancient times, especially. So the hippocamp, so sea creature. Next we have here is an ancient Greek coin from the city of Thassos. What we're looking for is the satyr. The satyr was this kind of woodland creature who was um, the, uh, the accompaniment of Dionysus. And what he would do is he would uh, actually chase around nymphs. And uh, he was very attracted to nymphs and they were attracted to him. So he's often pictured with a lot of nymphs. I don't know if you notice um, what he's doing. This is the satyr on the left and this is the nymph on the right. He kind of grabbed her in his hands. Both uh, the satyr at least is nude over here. And um, I would say this is the most um, provocative ancient Greek coin uh, depicting uh, something that uh, people have enjoyed doing for thousands of years, if not uh, since the beginning of time. So, very interesting depiction of the satyr and the nymph. Next, we have the most beautiful depiction of the nymph. Nymphs were used kind of like city goddesses. And um, on this coin, it's a coin of the city of Larissa in Thessaly. We're talking about 356 BC around. And what's interesting about this type, it's, um, is that it's the facing profile of the nymph executed in a beautiful style. And on the back, you have the horses. The um, Greek city of Larissa, it bred beautiful horses and was well renowned for its wonderful, you know, breeding horses and uh, uh, other farming activities. But what we're focusing on is the nymph. So the satyr being uh, man, half goat, and you know, part man, part animal, uh, kind of woodland creature, and the nymph also being he would um, kind of uh, really like her, um, and uh, who wouldn't like this beautiful woman anyway? So uh, very interesting. Um, Symbolism on the, for this coin. This is a coin with a lion. But what we're trying to focus on is actually the mythical creature called the Nemean lion. The Nemean lion was actually one of the first labors of Hercules. The Nemean lion had impenetrable skin. So no matter what weapon you used, a spear, a sword, um, and, or any other weapon, he would not be able to pierce its uh, magical skin. So what wound up happening, you could actually see depictions on coins and even the mosaics that Hercules wound up actually grabbing uh, the lion and strangled him. And then the only thing that was able to pierce its skin in order to skin it, he used its own claws. Afterwards, Hercules ventured forth and ventured on and did the other 12 11 labors wearing the lion skin as a protective armor wearing the the head on his um you know the scalp on his head and the rest of the skin as an amazing armor and that's how he's depicted quite you know in pretty much all of um on all coinage and mosaics and all, and all over the place. Next time you're at a museum and you see a statue of Hercules, let's say the Metropolitan Museum, you'll be able to see that he's wearing the uh, lion skin somewhere, at least. The Caledonian boar was another creature uh, that was um, mythically important and it was pierced by spears and what we have here is actually the piercing of the Caledonian boar in a hunt with a little dog underneath him attacking him. This is a coin of the Roman Republic and um, it's very interesting. The Caledonian boar story has, um, has something to do with Artemis, uh, her equivalent being Diana in the um, Roman uh, pantheon. So very interesting, the Caledonian boar. Next. What we have is the eagle. The eagle, um, when you're talking about it being as a mythological creature uh, or a mythical creature, would have been 
the representation of Jupiter or in the Greek pantheon, Zeus. So the eagle is quite often depicted on ancient coins. On this ancient coin of Nero from Antioch, uh, we have a beautiful depiction of the eagle with its open wings and notice also it's standing on the thunderbolt. The thunderbolt was an also another symbol of Zeus or Jupiter, the Roman equivalent. The bull is quite often depicted on ancient coins. Um, I would say the, the one to focus on would be the Cretan bull. That was also one of the labors of Hercules. And um, so on this coin, the bull is actually very interestingly depicted. Um, it's not, it may not always have to do with the Cretan bull, but it's still a very interesting mythological creature. Uh, being a bull and just uh, being the Cretan bull too. On the back also you have this um, torch. This is a coin, ancient coin of Kizikis. Uh, nice big bronze piece. Now on this coin is the cow and calf symbolism. It's a symbolism of fertility. So uh, the symbolism of fertility being of Eubian origin. So the, the cow is standing left and the little baby calf is suckling it. And in the back you have the stelly pattern that um, may be symbolizing actually the Gemini or Dioscuri twins in the sky. This is an ancient coin of Apollonia in Illyria. This ancient coin depicts the griffin. The griffin was another interesting mythical creature. Uh, it had the head of, uh, um, believed to be um, an eagle, wings, the body of a lion, and it was used. Um, it was used as a protection deity or protection animal, kind of like the Sphinx. This is the satyr pan, and. Um, uh, the whole the whole story goes is that uh, you know if somebody panics, uh, that comes from the word pan. So, but the creature uh, that we're looking for is this uh, griffin. Next, I included this crab as it could it could be symbolizing um, the crab in the sky, you know, or the symbol uh, zodiac sign of Cancer. This is an ancient uh, silver Greek coin from the city of Akragas in Sicily. And we're talking about being archaic, actually, 510 BC. Amazing coin, beautiful condition, and the crab, which could also be symbolizing the astrological symbol. Next, the mythological serpent on this beautiful coin of Apamea. With the Sista Mystica. The Sista Mystica was a special um, kind of a basket where they would store serpents, and the serpent had uh, symbolism to do with the ancient Greek god Dionysus. On, the, on this side, you have uh, many serpents uh, surrounding the name of the, of the magistrate, and uh, yeah. Gorgeous coin. Next, we have a coin with Medusa on it. A coin from the Roman Republic from 47 BC. What's also interesting is on the back you have Aurora driving the horses of the sun through the sky. So, beautiful coin of Medusa. Medusa was a gorgon and uh, was one of these creatures that if you stared at her or you looked at her, you would turn to stone. She was defeated by Perseus. Perseus chopped her head off and uh, wound up giving it to Athena as the story goes. Athena takes the head and it turns into a Gargonian symbol of stemming from Gorgon and it would become as an Aegis symbol. 
If you put something like a, a Gorgon's head on a shield or your armor, it would help you defend against your enemies. Next time you're watching a historical documentary or a historical, uh, historically based movie, you're going to notice on the breastplate of a lot of the soldiers this kind of symbol or this or this. Sometimes she's depicted more as a beautiful woman, woman uh, as in the Versace symbol. That's also Medusa if you guys have, uh, have seen it. In the back you have the owl. And this is an ancient Sicilian coin. So the Medusa, the Gorgonian, and Aegis are very much interlinked and very much important symbolism of the ancient times. Next, we have an ancient uh, Greek coin of Athens in Greece. And what we're focusing on this coin is the owl of Athena. The owl being the symbol of Athena. And on, the, of course, on this coin, you have a beautiful portrait of Athena. Notice the symbolism of Athena repeating over and over again. She's always depicted wearing a helmet and a female um, goddess of wisdom. Next, here we have the mythical panther. And in ancient... Uh, Greek times, it was actually um, the animal of Dionysus or Bacchus. Dionysus or Bacchus would actually ride the lion. I mean, uh, the panther. So this is a beautiful depiction of the panther on a coin of Galenus. Fantastic condition coin here. And the last but not least, you have the amazing depiction of a merman, a mermaid man holding a bow. In the back you have a galley. So you have part man, part fish, and um, very interesting mythological symbolism. So now that we explored this, check out my article linked below this video with uh, the different coins uh, you could actually watch here. All these coins are actually available for sale if you choose to, you know, want to look at them. So uh, I'm looking forward to dealing with you guys soon. Uh, like the video, subscribe, and uh, you know, let's uh, let's keep uh, keep the joy of numismatics going.